Yeah. Hello, people. I'm Jabby Koi, joined by Chara Kirk. Hi. We're here at CGV Cinemas. We're about to watch Leatherface. Oh! <laughs> I hear Leonardo Nam's gonna be here at CGV Cinemas. Who's that? Who? Leonardo Nam has been in many movies. Leonardo Lamb? Who's that? The Nam. Nam. N. Okay. Nam. Leonardo Mam. Who is that? From Westworld. From oh. like Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. Oh. From. Yeah. No. Okay. From the perfect score. For... What? Oh. Oh, oh Leonardo God. Lamb. You're you're the Asian guy Man. in Man. Westworld. Man. Oh. <laughs> right. I'm so sorry. Okay. Well. Le Le well Leonardo you know what? Enjoy. Man. Enjoy your. Enjoy your movie. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. sorry. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, that was fun. Oh, jeez. Quite Whoops. unexpected. Okay, so we're gonna watch Leatherface. <laughs> A big thank you to CGV Cinemas in Buena Park, California for sponsoring this video. Go to CGV Cinemas, they've got a great 4DX cinema as well as a wraparound cinema. Both are interesting experiences that I highly, highly recommend. Achara and I actually got to go recently and they did some demos for us and I gotta tell you, it's next level. Definitely, definitely worth checking out. You go now until Halloween, they have the Haunted Theater going on. The whole theater is decorated out. It looks really, really cool. All the employees dressed up in costumes and it looks dope. You might get chased by, <laughs> by, monsters. by monsters. And they have Halloween related films playing right now. So it's really cool. And the food's really good. And you all know how much I love food. Yeah, and they've got themed food there. So be sure to check it out. Leatherface. This comes from IMDb. A teenage Leatherface escapes from a mental hospital with three other inmates kidnapping a young nurse and taking her on a road trip from hell while being pursued by a lawman out for revenge. This is a fairly accurate description of what happens over the, over the course of the movie. And it makes it feel like there is a solid story in there, but I would disagree with that. Now, the film is not without its merits if you're into horror films. It's got its gory visuals. If you like gross out stuff, it's definitely in there. There's definitely like some stuff that'll make you cringe and make you upset. And you know, there's scary moments as well, but Overall, as a film, I didn't feel like it had a strong story. It had three different openings, and you didn't know who your main character was throughout the movie, and I think that's a fundamental issue. I think that what is most disappointing here is that there was potential for a good movie with a message about society, a commentary on society, and I think they missed that mark completely. It, they, they kind of touched on it, yeah. but it wasn't quite there. It wasn't strong enough, basically, for me at least. Right. They decided to deliberately keep it a mystery who exactly Leatherface was throughout the film. And the problem with that is you don't actually know who you're following. Like, you don't know who your main character is, who you're rooting for. Everyone's kind of messed up, mm -hmm. and it's just like this kind of mess. Now, the actors in here are great. Like, with what they have to work with, all the actors did a fantastic job, I thought. I, yeah. I liked everyone who was here. Stephen Dorff, Lily Taylor, Sam Strike, Vanessa Gross, Grass, Grassy, you know, Finn Jones, Sam Coleman, like everybody. Everybody yeah. here did a great job acting wise. Even the directing was cool, like the way the camera work was. Sometimes the directing and editing choices made it a little bit predictable when scares were coming, I felt. Like I could see what was coming. But like I think that they did a they did an all right job. Yeah. They did fine. It's just that the story wasn't there. There was no there was no character to follow. There was no character to hope wouldn't go to the dark side and then ends up going to the dark side. Yeah. I think that's the fundamental issue I have here because that's ultimately what the film was leading towards was you know this before you even get into the film because you know it's a prequel you know that it's about how Leatherface becomes Leatherface what the film should have aimed for was you see the points along the way where he could have just not been Leatherface yeah because the character the way he starts out is he doesn't want to be part of the life of violence that his family is encouraging he wants to stay clear of it even after they establish that the kid does something that is more in line with what his family does and then that's it and it's like it's not constantly sending home the message of he didn't want to break the law. He didn't want to be part of what they do. The commentary should have been that it's environmental, yeah. it's influences, and then like the cop, assuming that he's bad, influences him to be a bad character as opposed to him naturally being that way. I think that would have been a very interesting commentary on our society today. Instead, they just kind of went for in these different random directions. They just needed to focus it more. And had they done that, you would have actually had a 
very compelling story here. I would have really liked a, a main character to follow because there was no lead here. The way the description is here, it says Leatherface escapes from a mental hospital with three other inmates. It's like, that's not actually not really. what happens in the movie. He's kidnapped along with the nurse is yeah. what happens. That's not a big spoiler. That happens fairly early in the movie. I mean, that's, that's the best I can say is like, I'm frustrated because even though I'm not into horror movies, even though it's not my thing, I'm more into films like Get Out and don't breathe. Like those are more my speed or Jaws if you want to go back like really far. Yeah, but um, there's lots of different types of horror movies. Sure. So like you're more into the psychological thriller yeah. and this is more of a gross, gory, you know, lots of blood and guts and yeah. grossness in general. That, that's all fine. That's all well and good. But if you, but you, I would really like a story to be present along with it. Like I can deal with all that as long as you've got a story, as long as you've got something you're trying to say. This film wasn't trying to say anything. It, I mean, kind of, but not so much. For me, I felt like I would have enjoyed it more if, like you said, I could have seen more of Leatherface's development. Yes. It felt like they were kind of heading in that direction where they were saying, you know, he's really a good person. Right. But all this stuff happened to him, which made him that way. And, you know, it's an interesting commentary, or it could have been an interesting commentary on institutionalization. Yes. On nature versus nurture. Right. And all of that. But instead, they were kind of like, we're kind of slightly touching on this stuff, but here's some more gore. Rather oh. than like, it could have been emotional, which would have been really strong for yeah. me at least. And the thing about it is, there, it was more just gross than it was scary. It mm -hmm. was like things happened that was just disturbing to look at than it was unsettling and scary, if that makes any kind of sense. To be honest, I was more scared when we left the movie theater and there was an employee dressed up as a clown and he scared us. That scared the crap out of me. I was more grossed out by a lot of things that, that were happening. Like I didn't really get the heart palpitations right. that I get sometimes in horror films, but this was just like, oh no, why did they do that? So we're gonna discuss a few spoilers right now, not too many, but if you don't want any spoilers and you wanna watch this film, definitely click out of this video now and come back after you've watched the film. If you want a score to go off of, I would say that my score is with IMDb score, unfortunately on this one, 5.2 out of 10, I feel like is an accurate representation of how I feel about the movie, unfortunately. Like there are things to take away from the film that are, from a director's point, standpoint, like, the acting was great, some of the visuals were cool, the color, the costuming, set design, all that stuff was great. It felt very authentic, like it was actually f born in that era, but the story was missing. And so 5.2 out of 10 is my score. It's yeah, like, I would say that's a pretty accurate score. And this is coming from people who don't really know anything about the franchise. So we're really only judging it on its own merit yeah. as a single movie, not as part of the franchise. The franchise. Yeah. As far as spoilers go, you guys have left that don't want to hear spoilers. Right. As far as spoilers go, I didn't feel like enough was built up to to merit him chopping off the nurse's head. It, it didn't feel like that relationship was built strong enough and focused in hard enough of his love for Bud and what Bud has done for him. Mm. Like they needed to really establish why he cared so much about Bud other than just because he cares about Bud. They Were they in family? Wasn't Bud the fat kid from the beginning? I wasn't sure either. Like they that wasn't it's clear to not me. super clear yeah. all this stuff. I mean, maybe he was, maybe, maybe he was. Like the, that's the unfortunate part was it wasn't really clear who became who. And yeah. it seemed like they were trying to say, oh, Bud becomes Leatherface. And then, oh, psych, no, yeah. he's not. Like, that's a big problem to me. Like, you should know exactly who Leatherface is. That shouldn't be some game the director's playing with or the writer's playing with you. It should be clear that this guy is who becomes Leatherface. And you're just hoping, even though you know what happens, you're just hoping that he doesn't. It's kind of like Apollo 13. This is nowhere near on par with Apollo 13, but like you know what happens with Apollo 13. You know they survive if you if you read the Wikipedia page or read the history on it. But when you watch the movie, like you still get kind of anxious and nervous. Like, yeah. are they gonna make it home? Even though you know the real story, because that's how good of a film Ron Howard made. I feel like that's exactly what they should have done here, and that's what you know Star Wars was kind of aiming for when they did the prequels. Even though those weren't like, the best movies, that's what they were aiming for, and you can see that where he's coming from a good place, like that's, he just wants to do right, and it just kind of, kind of gets messed up along the way with his good intentions. That's what they should have done here. Yeah, so. and then you could at least feel sad for him, yes. you know, instead of just feeling, oh. And so what I wanted was something that drove him very obviously and clearly why he 
completely lost respect for this nurse to the point that he just wanted to murder her. It needed to be clear that Bud has gone above and beyond for him, has got his back every time he was in trouble, etc., etc. And then eventually, like, when Bud gets killed, it's just like, you see he's devastated in the movie, but I don't give, I don't give a shit. Like, I don't care. I don't know why he's devastated. It's like, other than, you know, they're pals, and he, he was I like... I mean, there were instances where, you know, Bud was the protector. He, he Bud was he also saved. a guard against him, though. Yeah, I know. So he's that not was, the brightest... That, I was gonna say the brightest tool in the shed. That's not the right term. The brightest crayon in the box, or the sharpest tool in the Ted. Ted? Shed. Yeah. My point is, Bud's loyalties were not exactly clear in the movie. Right. It's, it should have been that Bud was alongside them as well, the nurse and Jackson, and he was also just a hostage. Because then it would have been very clear that Bud is like there to protect him, etc. And yeah. then, you know, when he goes down, when he gets shot, whatever it is, and Jackson loses his mind, it makes more sense. And so, you, you directly correlate that with it being the fault of the nurse, and everything the nurse does is just leading to Jackson getting into more and more harm, in, into harm's way even further, despite his advice. Then I can kind of get it. That's, right. that's where I'm lost. It's like, it's it just, it just, it was this mess, and I could see what they were going for, but it didn't quite coalesce into something cohesive. That's the problem. And so when he finally cut off the woman's head at the end, I'm like, that happened because he's Leatherface now. That didn't happen because I, it felt emotionally motivated. That's what I'm trying to get at. That's all I'm saying. And it's like, it could have been that movie. It could have been that everything made sense in that direction. Okay, a, a great example of a, 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 an opportunity is in The Barn, when the cop, you know, had everybody, uh, maybe somehow Jackson isn't so tied up. Maybe he's not hanging from that rope like his daughter, like the cop's daughter was. Yeah. Uh, maybe what happens is Jackson tries to attack the, the cop and the nurse like stops him from killing the cop and that ends up getting uh, Jackson's mom killed or something like that like or that's when Bud gets killed like the the cop the, you know the nurse stops Jackson from killing the cop and then the cop in turn kills Bud at that scene instead every step of the way she's just getting in his way and making and making his life worse to the point where he just absolutely despises her, and then he chops her head off at the end. I'm like, okay, I get it. Now it all kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? He's the main character, and he's like, tied up, his head is in a thing, and he dro he's dropped into the bucket. I'm like, what the hell? Like, that's that's your main character. He, you should, I don't know. That's just, to me, you shouldn't have, it, you shouldn't have done that with the main character. That's all I'm saying. I think that a great thing they could have done in the beginning was don't have him in the pig's head. That should have been the fat kid in the pig's head. Mm -hmm. The other thing they should have done was, they had this weird thing where his mom wasn't allowed to see him. She was denied visitation despite having this court thing. I think that was a mistake in the film. They used that as a motivation for her to go crazy and try to break her son out, but instead what they should have done was, she gets to see her son, but he wants nothing to do with her. He's trying to distance himself as much as possible from her because he's a good dude and he doesn't want anything to do with what they do. He's happy to be in the mental institution instead of amongst these his, his crazy family members. And so that drives her nuts to the point where she goes, no, it's them, it's the medicine, and they're putting ideas in your head. I'm gonna get you out of here. And like, that is the idea that takes over her and why she tries to break him out. And then, the you know, the whole, the same thing happens. Like, the mental institution is, is, is um, amok and all the pen mental patients break out. And you, know, you could have the same story-ish, but at least there is a clear idea as to where Jackson's uh, uh, moral compass is. Yeah. From the beginning of the movie. I anyway, I, I think we've, you know, beaten this horse to death. So. Ha ha. Or pig. Or pig. Yeah, whatever. So ultimately, what this comes down to is there was a potential for a better movie here, and they missed the mark. And it's just, it's more frustrating of a film because there was a potential there. There's a lot of films out there where you're like, well, that was just a bad movie. Yeah. But there were actual opportunities here. I mean, it's already a built-in audience because of the other films that were successful. Why not make this the best story possible and have a commentary to go with it? Like, why not yeah. go there? In addition, you get your gross out visuals and whatnot and your scary moments. Why not have a good story to go with it? And I think that if you did, this wouldn't be a 5.2 out of 10. I think it would have been closer to a 10 out of 10. If it had a commentary, which which uh, Get Out had, I think it definitely would have been a stronger, much yeah. closer to a 10 out of 10. Yeah, true. It's not impossible for a horror story to have a strong commentary and get notoriety for it. I mean, World War Z, didn't that get all kinds of accolades? That book was was just, it's been praised everywhere because it's such a great story, a great novel. Yeah. Um, I haven't read it, but that's what I heard. Anyway, with that, you guys, 
Let us know in the comments below if you've seen Leatherface, how you felt about it, what you would have liked different from this film. If you did like it, why did you like it? I would really love to hear in the comments below. Please check out a chart Kirk on the social media, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, check out our other reactions, reviews, and short films. And if you live in Los Angeles or anywhere in the you know Orange County area, please go to CGB Cinemas in Buena Park and check out their 40X Theater, check out their Screen X Wraparound Theater, and definitely go on a Saturday or Sunday night before Halloween's over after seven o'clock and check out their- Yeah, the haunted. The Haunted Theater. I'm Javi Koei. This is a Chara Cook. Peace out.